All right, let's take a look at these practice problems that uh, look at the brightness of a star as it relates to the distance to that star. So the first question here is asking us, if the sun were suddenly moved five times further away, how much fainter would it be? Now all these questions are gonna kinda take the same form, and I believe I discussed this in an earlier video. You're gonna, you're gonna use this equation, um, which is that the brightness or flux of a star, we'll just call it brightness, but it has the symbol F here, is related to the intrinsic brightness or the energy given off by that star divided by four pi d squared. And as I explained before, the kinds of problems you're gonna be asked are what you might call a ratio problem. But what that, what that means, and I don't wanna go through the algebra of, of deriving the, the new version of this equation. What it means essentially is that the equation becomes greatly simplified, right? because when we're comparing a star to being close versus far away, um, one thing that doesn't change is the total energy given off by the star, and the other thing that doesn't change is this value of four pi. So we end up with a simplified equation, which is that the, the brightness is proportional to one over the distance squared. But this is, this is one way to think about it, and you could write this equation on your equation sheet if you wanted to, where this symbol is representing proportional, um, which you could treat as an equal sign for these kinds of questions. But you know, I'd, I'd, I'd almost suggest that you think about it more generally than an equation, which is basically just to say that the brightness, I'll even write this not even as an equation, but as, as words. So brightness goes as distance squared. So what this helps me with is thinking about the important part here, which is that it's always distance squared that matters. The distance squared is how the brightness changes. And I think we have an intuition that if it's further away, we know it will be fainter, right? And, and the reason I'm doing it this way is because otherwise when you use these equations, it's easy to get tripped up on the fractions, like one over something and having to take the inverse of stuff. Like that, that's math that we don't need to get tripped up on because we have this intuitive understanding that if it's further away, it must be fainter. And in fact, the questions make that clear because they always ask you how much fainter or how much brighter is it? So. So I think you'll see that as I work through these examples, that using just this general relationship, brightness goes as distance squared, is really all we need to solve these problems. Okay, so if it says here, um, if the sun were suddenly moved five times further away, right? So that's our distance. So, and, and when we see in these problems, it says five times, that's what makes this a ratio problem, is we don't actually know what the distance of, of the star is. And whenever you're asked these kinds of problems, you won't know what the distance really is. You are simply being told how much it's changing. All right, so what we do is then we, we plug in that number five, we plug that in for the distance. So we say that the distance is five times bigger. So the distance, I'll just say equals five. And that five we all now rep know represents five times bigger. But because the brightness goes as the distance squared, I'm sorry, yeah, okay, so five times further. So the brightness goes as distance squared, we know that we have to square that value. So the distance squared would be five squared, which is, we could put that in our calculator, or perhaps you have that one memorized. Okay, well, it's just five times five, so 25. So the distance squared in this case would be 25. So that means that the brightness, if the distance changes by five, the brightness will change by 25. And in this case, we're told that it's getting fainter, okay? And it's further away, so it must be 25 times fainter. So we would just put 25 here. And that's your final answer. Okay, likewise, this, this question is really similar, all right? if the, although it's a little tricky, right, because we have a half in here. So this is where we're gonna use this, this relationship, our equation up here, Dis, brightness goes as distance squared. In this case, it says the distance to a star is cut in half. So our distance will equal a half. Now, just so I don't get caught up on fractions, 
I'm just going to write a half like this, 0.5. All right. Um, so the distance is 0.5. And if I square this then, okay, my distance squared, d squared, would equal, I can type that into a calculator. Again, in this case, it'll be 0 0.25. So my brightness is going to change somehow by this. Now this is where we have to think through our equation. Now if we if we were using the math and the, the fractions, the fractions would give us a clue here, but it's so easy to get tripped up on that math. Instead, let's just think through this. If its distance is cut in half, so it's closer to us, has it gotten brighter or fainter? Well, we're told that it's gotten a lot brighter. Well, how much brighter? You see this number I have here is 0.25. What I need to realize is that number is actually what? It's 1 fourth, right? So this is really confusing, I'm realizing. It's really confusing. But the amount brighter it has gotten is actually four times brighter, right? Because if I said it's 0.25 times brighter, well, that doesn't make sense. Because imagine, imagine you have 100, and you say, I'm going to make it 0.25 times brighter, times 0.25, I get 25. Well, that's less. It went down. It went from 100 down to 25. Okay, but we know it got brighter because it got so much closer. Another way to put this, I'm, I'm sorry, this is kind of confusing. And part of this is, is if you try to skip some of the algebra, your intuition gets challenged, I guess, here. Um, I, well, let me show you the algebra. Maybe that'll help. So if I were to do it with the algebra, I would say f equals 1 over d squared. All right? And in this case, d is 1 half, 1 over 2. So if I plugged that in, I would end up with this. My brightness is going to equal then 1 over 1 half squared, which is equal to 1 over, now to square a half, you'd have to remember your rules of fractions, it would become 1, 1 over 4. And again, you need to remember your fraction rules here, and this is why this is tricky, is when you have 1 over a fourth, it actually flips this thing in the denominator, and you end up with f equals 4. Okay, so when you work out the math through the equation, you would end up with your brightness is four times brighter. Okay, so, so if, you're, if you're not working through those fractions in math, you've got to think through the intuition and say, well, it's closer, so it must be many times brighter. In fact, it must be four times brighter. Another way to put this is when, because if it's the fraction that's tripping you up, you could say, okay, <clears throat> the distance is cut in half. Another way to say that a half is the same as saying it is two times closer. Two times closer. And so if it goes as the distance squared, well, two squared is four, and that's how you end up with four. I know it's kind of tricky. You'll get the hang of it. It's what these practice questions are for. All right, let's try the next one. Two stars appear to have the same brightness in the sky. Okay, that means they're the E value is equal. But star A is three times farther away three times further, star A, then star B. How many times more energy, oh, I'm sorry, so the same brightness, that's telling us that the F values are the same. That's our brightness in the sky. So how many times more energy is star A giving off than star B? All right, we can figure that out. Okay, so this is like this ratio problem here. So I, I'm starting with my equation, my simplified equation here, where now the energy is not the same because it's not one star that's moving, it's comparing two stars. So I have here this energy over d squared, and I'm using the proportional sign because the I've dropped the four pi. Okay, and so what is it telling me here? It's telling me Star A is three times further away. So I'll plug in a three for the number D. And it's telling me that the F values are equal. So that means this F 
value will just be one. So I'd have one is proportional to e over three squared. So to get the e value by itself, that is this energy being given off by these stars, I'd have to multiply both sides by three squared. Well, three squared is just nine. So multiply both sides times nine over here cancels that out times nine over here and I end up with this energy must be uh, the total energy being given off must be nine times greater okay so that would be nine I hope what you notice though as we do this it, I, I know this is confusing let me say that first of all it's not easy but I hope you notice how these problems are all go back to this core issue here that everything's related to distance squared and that's really the reason I'm assigning these questions in the first place is to emphasize this relationship notice here I have five times further away and what's my answer five squared 25 here it's cut in half or two times closer so what's my answer four two squared here it's three times farther away so how much energy is being off well it must be three squared nine times as much so you see there's a pretty clear pattern so if you're getting stuck on these chances are your answer is going to be that value squared in some in some way right especially if that value is telling you the distance okay let's look at the next two problems on this assignment okay question four if the sun were moved farther away and suddenly appeared four times fainter four times fainter in the sky how many times further away would it be now if we were just guessing here given the pattern we've seen okay the distance um, let's see okay so I would write this again here let's just guess first and then let's try to figure it out with the math okay brightness goes as distance squared now your first guess might be well okay this is 4 just square it okay so the answer is 16 that's your first guess because that's what we've done the first three times but keep in mind that what it's saying here is that it's four times fainter so if the brightness has changed by 4 how much has the distance changed well, using just this relationship, I know that, that it's the distance squared that tells me how the brightness changes. So I would say if, this, if the distance changed uh, how many times further, if the distance changed by a factor of 2, and 2 squared would make it 4. So using just this relationship, my, my guess would be that the answer is 2. But let's work it out. So I've, I'm starting with this proportionality here. F is proportional to the energy divided by d squared. All right, and um, what am I told? I'm told it's four times, it's the same star, it's the sun. So E doesn't change, right? Which means in a, in a ratio problem like this, if the value doesn't change, I just say it's one. Um, it's four times fainter. So that means F has changed by a factor of four. And the question then is how much has D changed? All right, so that means this equation, I'm just gonna write it as an equation now becomes, oops, let me just scratch that. It becomes uh, four equals one over D squared. And now I'm going to multiply both sides by D squared. See, times D squared, times D squared, so this is doing the algebra. Um, and I end up with that cancels and I have d squared times 4. Now notice you don't necessarily have to do all this math but this is how if you did it this way instead of just using that relationship this is how you'd figure it out. Okay so now I have to divide both sides by 4 to get d squared by itself doing all the algebra. So d squared equals 1 over 4 and now I'm going to square root both sides. Square root, square root. And so d equals the square root of 1 fourth. You can type that in a calculator, you'll end up with 1 half. So this is where it gets, to me I get tripped up, right? Because well if d is 1 half, why isn't 1 half my answer then? Why isn't the answer 1 half? Well I gotta think through this, okay? It moved farther away disappear, let's see, it appeared four times fainter. So how many times further away is it? 
Well, if I said it's a half a times further, that means it's actually closer, right? Just like a half of 100 would be 50. So, so that's again where you kind of have to use that intuition to say it must have to be two as your answer. It's twice as far away and makes it four times fainter. Now, if this is bothering you that I'm kind of like hand wavy here, the, the secret to this has to do with this whole fainter business. Um, like, if I was being really specific, you know, what does four times fainter mean? If you're really doing all the math that I'm kind of skipping over, you would actually say that this flux is one over four um, because it's four times fainter, so it's a fourth of its original value. And the math just keeps getting uglier and more and more fractions. So that's why I'm trying to help the best way I can by having you focus on this relationship. The brightness is related to the distance squared. All right, two stars in the sky, question five, two stars in the sky give off the same amount of total energy, okay, but star A appears 121 times fainter, so our brightness part is 121. And in the night sky, then star B, how many times farther away is star A than star B? Okay, again, um, let's take a look at my relationship. I'm just gonna do it this way instead of messing with the equation. The equation bothers me every time I do it. Brightness relates to distance squared. The brightness in this case has changed by a factor of 121, which means the distance, how much is it changed by? Well, I'd have to square root it, both sides. Square root it, square root it. So then the distance change would be the square root of 121, which is 11. I think, let's double check. 121 square root, 11. So just to, as you've watched through this video, you know, you'll notice that these problems are all related through either squares or square roots. You'll also notice that all of the answers have been whole numbers. Um, that won't necessarily always be the case. Maybe you'll have a decimal, but you've noticed they've all been greater than one, and that will be the case. So if you're getting an answer that's like a fraction, like a half or a fourth, you've, you, you've done it wrong. Chances are you might want to flip it, but um, your answers should all be greater than one for these kinds of problems. Okay, I hope you found that useful, and I will catch you next time.